Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another IMV tutorial and in today's tutorial we will learn how to make shirt. Um, we have done a few uh, clothing for female and male in the past but in today's tutorial we will learn how to make a shirt and let me show you guys what we get about to make. So we will try to make this in both 3ds Max and Marvelous Designer. Uh, we will use 3ds Max to actually uh, get the uh, uh, the kind of shape of the shirt and then we are gonna try to get to marvelous designer and start you know making the actual fabric for the shirt and we'll see how it goes so the first thing you need to do is make sure that your IMVU uh, male avatar or female whatever you want it to make uh, first thing first let's go ahead and also make sure that marvelous designer is open so if you wanted to remember how did we make the avatar last time for the uh, marvelous designer all you have to do is make sure to select edge faces and select one body part and then go ahead and modify panel right click and collapse to here's what you need to do you're going to go ahead and select attach and select the arms and both hands the pelvis and the legs and turn off attach now let's go ahead and get rid of the glasses as well as the hair so left click and select it and then hit delete and that's we still have to do this right click and collapse all all we have left is the head and the mesh which is the body let's go ahead and select these two by holding control and select both of them right click and hide selection now all you have to do is left click entirely over the actual skeleton and hit delete right click again and let's go ahead and just make sure to see everything and now all you have to do is while everything is in the scene go ahead and export it and make sure this is set to be let me choose where the folder and the desktop and we're gonna call this make sure this is set to be opj file and then call this imview male avatar all right so while we here go ahead and save it it was i already did it before but if it if you're probably not going to get that so let's go ahead and save it whatever it is we're going to export and done now let's move to uh, marvelous designer and here you should have a clear scene as you started the uh, marvelous designer but if not all you have to do whatever avatar is here right click and make sure to select uh, clear avatar and now let's go ahead and add import an opj file let's go ahead and go up and see where our folder and let's go ahead and view mail i think it's this one let's see i probably have saved it in the mail avatar folder which is right here hmm, it's kind of weird oh here it is okay once it load you're gonna load this in avatar keep everything the same go ahead and open or okay notice here that you may not really just have the head you know uh texture missing you probably have all the other body parts are missing but if not all you have to do is get a little closer by your mouse and then left click on the head and where it says diffuse map let's go ahead and load up the diffuse texture which is we have here and then you might notice that there's white kind of color which is the ambient color let's go ahead and take this back to something like dark black and let's go ahead and you can i'm not sure if you can do the eyes as well let me see if i will take this down yeah, it's not loading properly because I don't think we have done the eyes. Oh, here it is. And so gonna get it also to get make sure all the ambient color is set to black because you're not gonna really need it. It's gonna set this also to black so you can see the avatar kind of even. So once you're done with all that, keep the avatar in the middle where you actually loaded, and all you have to do now is go on file. And make sure this is set to be project, save as a project. 
And let's go ahead and choose the actual folder where we saved it, RMVU. And let's go ahead and call this RMVU. Marvelous Designer Avatar. Okay. Let's go ahead and save it. Anytime you need to do open the avatar again, let's go ahead and show you that. Go ahead and open project, or you can use that shortcut control I, and it will tell you to choose where the folder is, and all you have to do is get open it. And it loaded up completely with the actual uh, texture. So you didn't really have to do that again. So now, let's go back into the shirt that we're going to be making. Which is going to be this one here. So that contains like one side here, one part. The arms is another one. The back is another part of the shirt. And then here we can just consider this another part. That kind of like inside shirt. So let's go ahead and try to see what we can do here. So in the T D in the two in the two D uh, viewport, let's go ahead and go for the rectangle. Uh, no, we can actually go and choose the polygon. Let's go ahead and choose here one. Get about a half, just about somewhere around here. Go ahead and hold on shift and drag all the way down until you actually see it's right with the hips. Let's go ahead and continue to draw the rest of the body. And then once you're done, go ahead back again to uh, the edit pattern. Deselect everything. Make sure you select one edge. Right click, unfold. It will copy this to the other side as you can see here. What you have to do now, as we did last time, go ahead and right click. Copy, right click again, paste, hold on shift, and make sure you place it exactly on the other one. Once it's done, hold on shift again, and lift click and drag. Okay, let me see why it's not moving. Oh, well, we have to actually move it first and then hold shift. So let's go ahead and get it somewhere where we can see. The reason why I'll take it this time very far away, because we're still going to have to do the arms. So let's go ahead and select this one side, hold it from the, like, make sure this is set to be straight line with this one, like both aligned in the same, and then select this pattern, and from the, for the blue axis, left click and drag to the back of this avatar, and then right click and choose um, horizontally. That will make sure that facing the, the white color pattern or face is facing back, and what's dark is facing inside. Let's go ahead and select this, get a little closer. And let's see. Notice here, the front is what we really need here to have that kind of V-cut thing. But in the back, we don't really need that. So let's go ahead and back to where it says edit pattern. Left click on that vertices, hit back space. Notice it snaps back and give you that straight line. All right, let's go ahead and start now with the sewing part, just to save ourselves time. We start with the closest to the far, like the closest, the closer than the far to the far part. So let's go ahead one edge. That's gonna be where the arms. So we don't need we don't need to sew these two together at all, just for now. And these two here, as well as here. And then look aside here. We have a straight line. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with the far part. And always make sure if you go to choose the top of that edge or the bottom to match it with the other one. Like if you're going to go here with the bottom of that edge, let's go ahead and choose with the bottom of this one. Let's go ahead and take a look. It's still going to give you a straight line. So let's go ahead and do this one. And here will be the last. And you just can give it to try now. Let's go ahead and simulate. As you can see, everything looks pretty good so far, except there's a few gaps here, but we'll get to fix that later on. Now, let's go ahead and undo the simulation. If you accidentally did that and you notice that the pattern has been moved, all you have to do is like select whatever pattern you see is not properly aligned. Let's go ahead and move it to the side a little bit. And maybe 
Okay, uh, to address something, I think one of my subscribers have a problem with the way the shirt it would go in the character. Um, I probably have answered her, but I will answer it again. Keep always the pattern away from the body. If you ever get the pattern just close enough to the body that actually you can see through. Let's go ahead and try to simulate that. Notice what happened. And it doesn't matter how far you're going to pull that out. It might be fixed easily, but sometimes with older computers, it will take so long to do that. So when you arrange, when you put the patterns to the body, make sure they are far away. Not too far away like that, just, you know, off the skin as you can see it. And as we always do, let's go ahead and select the avatar and go for the scene. Make sure to select the IMVU uh, male avatar. And under your skin, you can keep this at 3 for now, but if you want to change it, this is exactly how far the shirt will be off the skin. And then here, we can just make for the simulation purposes, you can make this a set to 1. And to do that, left click once and use your mouse wheel, you know. Rotate it up and it should go to one. All right, now is the important part, which is we probably haven't learned um, from the last three to two tutorials that we have done for Marvelous Designer, and that is something called pattern. Let's go ahead and choose avatar. And uh, let me see if I, I see if this uh, avatar editor, oh yeah, under avatar, avatar editor. And here you will have the default characters for the Marvelous Designer. We're going to go for Arrangement. And here, let's go ahead and add under Pounding Volumes. Let's go ahead and add one. Notice it draw like a, a cylindrical kind of or tube thing all the way around the character. All you have to do now is reposition it. So let's go ahead and while this selected, pull this up. And you can go ahead and rotate it. To match the arm and let's go ahead and try to get as far as we can hold on your right click on your mouse and that's how you change the view lift hold on your mouse wheel down to move you know the view aside and of course the left click to select all right let's go ahead and start moving a little bit more and under here you can go ahead and again lift click once and once it's highlighted, use your mouse wheel up and down to increase or decrease the value. Okay. We can, as you can see, it start to shrink down a little bit. I just wanted something to exactly match with the arm, so I don't need something like really too short. Okay. All we have to do next is probably just copy and paste that again and just copy that to the other side. So we still, you can put the value if you know exactly what it is. You can just copy the same value I will have here, then try to do that. So I have here 355. Let's go ahead and pull this closer again to the arms and maybe a little bit more. And Okay, looks pretty good. Okay, so what we have to do now is to try to copy that. I'm sure that must be another copy. Nope. You can actually save it and add it again if you want to. Uh, let me see if I can. It's not really going so well. Anyway, uh, you can go ahead and choose the same value or you can add another one. Let's first rename this because it's really important. Let's go ahead and rename this as the right. I'm sorry, that's going to be the left. Left. What I'm doing. Left. Arm. Okay, let's go ahead and add another one. And let's call it right. Arm. Okay, we can go ahead and have the same value just for now. And we're going to choose 355 for this one. We can go ahead and pull this up. Uh, let me see if I can get the copy to the same position. Okay, it's 1550 for this one. We can actually have to do this manually. So, 
Okay, so just go ahead and reposition that again on the other arm. And make sure it doesn't really have to be precise because what we do is we just try to tell Marvelous Designer that this is where we're going to place our planes, which is we will be making an easy step instead of actually having two sides for the arms. We're going to just draw one plane and then we'll connect it to the, to the other part. Okay, it looks pretty good so far. So let's go ahead and now, while we're here, we're going to select the left and under points, we can go ahead and draw a point. And so we go and add two actually. Let's first add arrangement point, point, and then we can call this left arm. And under here, we can call this right arm. The reason why, because once we select one of these, we're gonna go hit under arrangement PV, and you can select which one. But the first one, we choose the left arm, so we're going to choose the left arm. And notice what happened here. It draw a point for us. That's where we're going to be having our plane. So let's go ahead and move it. You can choose these values, you know, the x-axis. I want it somewhere in the middle of the arm, which is, I probably, probably, that's, that's really good. Let's keep it that way. And... Under here, we can also go for the right arm and choose arrangement PV. Let's go ahead and choose the right arm. And let's go ahead and copy the same values here, like 70. They might go minus 70 or 70. Let's try 70 first. Yeah, so we'll have to do minus 70. Okay, let's see if it can go right. Okay, whatever the value, hmm, because it's weird. Maybe it's the way that this these two were placed, kind of in opposite direction. But you know what to do. It's like you place them exactly in the middle of the arm. Let's go ahead and close this now. And while we're here, let's go ahead and choose from these uh, display uh, options. We're going to go ahead and choose show pounding volumes. And also, we'll go ahead and choose the, the points, which is right here. Okay. Now... To do the arms, let's go ahead and draw a rectangle, just like a box. And while we're here, let's go ahead and add right-click copy. And so I just did that wrong. Right-click copy, and then right-click and paste. Hold on, shift again, just to copy it right in the same position. So what we have to do here is select one pattern. And as you're hovering over with your mouse, notice what happened. You can see, guys, if I get closer, it turned that map or that plane that we have into an actual um, color for the arms. So just by hovering over this, you can see it turns around. Let's go ahead and left click once. And here it takes the shape, which is what we wanted. Let's go ahead and take this one as well and do the same thing with it and now let's go ahead and also turn off um, pounding volumes and as we hear let's go ahead and let me show you this a, bit, a lot better um, here you might notice that where these two sides ends kind of overlap each other you can see this one edge here and one edge there and the same case was here so to fix that, select one side, and let's go ahead and shrink this a little bit. And you can see how this is going to behave in real time with the 3D view port. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and move to the other side as well. And let's see. I actually can shrink this this way. Let me go ahead and move it a little more so you can see. So you try to get the best uh, distance. That's just pretty good still. So while we're still here, let's go ahead and sew these two parts together by going to for this side here. Go ahead and sew that with that side. Notice what happened. It gave me again the straight line that we always looking for, and as well as here. And look on the other side as well. We have the straight line. So what we have left 
is this. What we need to do is like go ahead and select the same pattern and go ahead and move this up. And notice what happened. It expands along the arm. And that's exactly how you do color for arm or shirt. So what we're going to do, we're going to place it back again right where we want it. And then we can just move this up a little more. Okay, it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here. And I hope I can get that properly at least. But it doesn't really matter. We're still going to sew these two parts together with the shirt. So it's not going to conflict or anything. Let's go ahead and reposition that a little closer. Okay, pretty good. Now, what we have to do here, remember these are the sides where we're going to actually have our, uh, let me show you this. If I select this one here, this is the part that's going to be sewed to the arms. And this is going to be the one by the hand, as well as this. There's going to be one the side by the arm, by the shoulders, and this is going to be by the hand. But remember, we have the collar it's separated to two parts so to do that select this one edge and hold on control select the other edge i'm sorry hold on shift actually shift and select each each of these uh edges right click and make sure it's set to be split once it comes to right here all you have to do is come here where it says um uniform uniform split Segments is two, which is going to be have one and two segments in each. Let's go ahead and select to OK. And for some reason, it didn't do that. Let's go ahead and try it again. Split and under uniform split, we can choose two. All right. First thing first, what we need to do is to define which pattern is which. This one we said this is going to be the left and this is going to be the right. Uh, so what we need to do is this we select one side of this pattern and get to sue and let's see how this is gonna behave if we did this if it give us a straight line we are good but if it didn't like this all we have to do is select the way it says edit sewing right click on the edge reverse or you can use the shortcut if you want to but if you get a bit closer look this is actually is not that edge. It takes the far edge and sew it together. Like you can tell how far this is from the actual shirt. So let's go ahead and right click and delete sewing. Let's draw the other part by going here. And let's see how far this is going to go. It takes a little bit of practice just until you get the right, you know, the right results. Uh, let's go ahead and back and reverse that. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to see what we did is probably good or not. To do that, let's go ahead and select the other part and sew these two together. Let's go ahead and re-simulate. If it's not properly, which is probably not, let's go ahead and just pull everything away and just see how we did. Okay, it's still not right. Okay, let's go ahead and undo... Uh, our simulation here and this can give you a lot of better you know a lot better results as you can see it now so let's go ahead and select this one more time and we can just right click and reverse and maybe we can get a good results right now uh, I'm still trying to find where the proper uh, pattern so we have the green they go all the way around here Okay, so we can do this one thing, select the pattern, and under that rotation thing, you can just go ahead and rotate it aside and just get the best results to match up with the shirt. Okay, if we go crazy like that, try to get it from another view, because sometimes, you know, the application snaps. Let's see how... Good. Is it looking so far? Okay, we still have a problem here. So let's go ahead and try to rotate it again. Okay. So anyway, I'll try to get 
to do the whole thing and uh, after I sew these parts together um, just to kind of shorten the video a little bit and when I'm done with it I'll come back okay so what I actually did was if I simulate here you will guys notice that the shirt it splits from right here and this is exactly what you need to do with the color is to make sure let me just redo that um, the area where the splits happen between the two sides it's facing the same line was the actual shirt so let's go ahead as you see it is still kind of messed up but if you rotate it and try to get you know the exact the same line was the shirt and let's just go ahead and re as you can see make that split facing up toward the actual line with the shirt and let's go ahead and try to fix the position of this thing a little better and we can just do a little bit of adjustment here so as you can see now the, all the lines is going the same direction which is pretty good let's go ahead and do the same thing with the side with the other part we're going to rotate it and don't worry about you know if it goes really crazy it's easy to fix so let's go ahead and uh, move it down a little bit That was actually something that I just recently learned um, to fix easily was no problem. Okay. So again, it doesn't really have to be perfect as long as you know it's going properly as you want it. And that's the the beauty of this software. It doesn't really always have to be perfect patterns. Okay. So let's go ahead and select the uh, sewing segments again and we're gonna go ahead and choose this one let's try this is probably the auto part let's try and see if this how it works okay we got it but it flipped let's go ahead and uh, right click here and reverse looks pretty good and as well as here okay looks pretty good so we'll go ahead and simulate and see what we have done if it's really going well or not okay if it's going, is it going crazy like that which is I'm sure some of you guys might have experienced the reason why it's first thing first is the um, if you remember what we did here oh we have like conflicted lines here oh wow when both of them that's kinda weird really so let's fix that by going select in one side here right click and reverse I did check reverse okay and for the green let's go ahead and right click again and hit reverse let's go to re-simulate okay it looks a lot better it looks a lot better okay but if you notice how fluffy these colors are this is not exactly how we wanted it and this is one of the uh, the questions that I was asked about uh, last tutorial, and how to make the cloth kind of like you know a little more of a you know like skin to the body instead of being fluffy like that. There's a few ways to do that. Let's go ahead and select both patterns. Hold on, shift and select the other one. Under here, where it says uh, pressure. If you pull this forward, notice how far. It become fluffy like it's real like air going through it but if it's refresh if take the pressure down it kind of shrinks everything but notice we still have kind of extra on the actual pattern itself like this is still much so let's go ahead and select hold on shift and select both pattern and maybe shrink them down a little bit okay we're gonna try to see if we can get okay that's the height of this thing okay how about if we shrink this in a little more? Let's go and try to see re-simulate again. You can see now it start getting a better results. So shrink this in. Okay. It doesn't matter if it falls like that. We can just pull this up again from the area that get through, and you can tell. It is really starting to make sense right now for these arms. 
Okay, still kind of low poly thing. And you remember if when we selected these two patterns, they're under the particles. We haven't changed anything, so let's go ahead and select hold on shift and select these all patterns and make sure this is set to be something like 15. And let's go ahead and re-simulate. Now you can tell that everything start closing the gaps as we see here. Uh, let's see if I can pull this out a little bit. Okay, now if you look to the shirt that we wanted to make, it's all up to this area of arm. Let's go ahead and try to see what, what can we do. If you select, well, it says uh, edit patterns, select that edge, hold on shift and select this edge again. And let's see if I can find it here. Okay, I think it's fold is what I'm looking for. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, it's not here. Might be if I select one edge only, I can see it. Uh, okay, still not there. Okay. Uh, let's see. They have changed the settings since the last time I've used this software. Uh, so it might be a little bit of confusing as you first begin. But they used to have something called Fold uh, somewhere around here. Well, let's go ahead and try. For maybe you wanted to do is select these two guys here, these two sides, and you can actually go ahead and scale them down if you want to. Let me see if I can do that. So like these two, and or you can actually go ahead and hold one vertices, hold on shift, or actually move it with your left click mouse first, and then hold on shift to get a little bit of an angle here. And do the same thing here and let's go ahead and do the same thing here so move it first and then hold on shift okay let's go ahead and uh, re-simulate again so things has gone really far with this but well, let's go ahead and re-simulate and reposition this okay it takes this down and rotate it So this will always consist of, you know, fixing and trying again and fixing. So try to be very patient with this software. It really worth it. So I'm going to try to see if I can. Hopefully having got mistaken here with these um, parts. And let's go ahead and try to actually give it a little bit of a kind of heights in these two here. Okay. And hold on this and pull it up again so what I'm gonna do here just to save you guys the process of editing um, I will make sure that everything is properly placed and well designed and uh, when I come back I'll tell you what exactly I did to get that results and um, we'll move on after to 3ds max okay so here I have finished all the uh, adjustment for the patterns and as you can see, if I show you a little closer, that the split from the shirt, it goes all the way around and follow the same color. Um, the only thing that I might want to do still is to kind of kind of get the like this gap here area, this area, get a little bit more down to his chest. So to do that, I get a bit closer, edit pattern. And under here, you can just pull this down, hold on shift again, and get a little bit of a, an edge here. Let's see how it looks like. Pretty good. Mac into this. I think it's pretty good, right under his chest. And while we're here, you can go ahead and add, um, draw uh, a polygon. So to do that, let's go ahead and add one around here. And then hold on shift in the middle. Okay, accidentally do not really hold the shift because it will snap this to be a straight line. And it's just about here. And close it like a triangle shape. And then while we're still here, under the insert with the add point split. And let's go ahead and same line, match up with the edge. 
in each one of these and all you have to do now is go back into the two patterns and select these two together as well as these two and let's go to re-simulate as you can see it takes the shape and everything let me show you let's go to add two patterns uh, two fabrics actually let's go ahead and choose maybe the default one will be gray for our shirt and the other one will be white let's go ahead and take this left click and drag choose the actual uh the new pattern that we made so you can see uh let's go back in here okay it needs to be very way down so to get that curve from a straight line under here and then left click and drag so it takes that to make a curve which is we might need to pull actually a little more and then you still can adjust everything from the 3d window and let's go ahead and drag this maybe pull this off the arms a little bit Okay, that looks pretty good. A little relax. If you still see, you know, like areas like that, all you have to do is look where exactly this is happening and start left click and drag from the actual shirt, you know, with the cloth itself. For some reason, it's not really happening. Okay. There we go. Just a little bit of you know pulling and then re release it that will take the shape of the arm because doing re simulate again in that case it will not fix it so it looks pretty good on this side let's go to the other side as well and pull it and don't worry about stretching you know the the clothing because it's always going to be easy to fix Pull that a, a little bit closer. Okay, looks pretty good. And that will be very difficult, but we can get through it. Let's go ahead and see if I can. Okay. There's always a problem we will see in every software when you're using it. It's just a matter of how you can fix that. Okay, that's going to be really complicated because actually the shirt came off the actual arm completely. So pulling this back in, that will be very difficult. Let me just go ahead and move this a little bit so I can see the 3D men the window for a little bit bigger. Okay, and Okay, it's almost there, I guess. Let's see.
Okay, so we fixed the areas where we want it to be fixed. Okay, what we have left is try to get this a little bit down. So let's go ahead and uh, edit our pattern again. Left click and drag over these vertices. And hold on, first thing, lift, click and drag them down. And hold on, shift, just to get that straight line you want. And maybe a little more. What's well, good? Let's go and re simulate. Okay, we still have a few gaps here. Pretty good fixed. Okay. Good. Okay. Except here. Again, for some jittering like that, all you got to do is just wait for it until it relaxes completely. And if it still does that and you can see the skin, try to pull just a little bit and release it. That will actually make everything relax. And if not, just go ahead and pull the geometry of the shirt up. So it takes the pressure off that area. Okay. Looks very good. So we can export it just like that. And remember that the way you set up the actual shirt, this is how the UV map in 3ds Max will be. So let's go ahead and hold on shift again, get it closer. And maybe you can just have this one move it a little bit closer. As well as this. Okay. Alright, now what we got to do here. This is really, you know, like too much geometry for IMVU. So see if your shirt is too much geometry or not. Under, uh, I think it was a, was a fabric or the 3D garment display. And let me see. No, actually, let me see. Oh, texture display. You got to choose which is mesh. See all these triangles? All of this will consider be too much for an actual shirt, but it still can try. You know, but it will take you so long to actually kind of uh, skin this to IMVU. But we also gonna I'm gonna show you the technique tonight uh, to easily you know how to skin the entire shirt in probably a few minutes. So let's go ahead and under we can keep it. You know what? We can we can keep it that way for triangles just for now. So let's go ahead and back into the default and. While everything is left, you know, do not really select anything. Just make sure to go ahead and file, export an OPJ file. And here, let's go ahead and choose IMVU mail shirt. Let's go ahead and save it. And always, always make sure all avatar is turned like uncheck single object and it's going to be weld for all the vertices and unify UV coordinates that will keep this layout when you t when you move it back to uh, 3ds max and if you have any texture you can use that but if not in our case here so you want to continue and hit ok then we will move to 3ds max and let's go ahead and reload our folder remember this is the actual uh, OPJ folder that we exported earlier. So let's go ahead and reset our scene. And we can just get rid of the glasses. Okay. And I hope you guys don't mind this uh, physique CPU thing because it's a new plugin I think I just recently know about and I it helps 3ds Max to run much smoother. And now what we have to do is go ahead and import our shirt and make sure what we hear under which says import which says non-native file format and here we're gonna go ahead and choose desktop where we save our folder and we will find the IMVO mail shirt which is right here whatever it is we'll go ahead and load it all right it came exactly in the skin and let's go ahead and under that we can go ahead and right click to find out if you selected the shirt or not go from left click here 
and make sure edge faces is turned on and as you can see this where we selected the shirt you can go ahead and rename it from here let's go ahead and call it IMVU male shirt okay while we're here go ahead and right click it will poly and what we have left in the actual shirt if you guys remember is to make this kind of lines going around the shirt and each side so to do that there's a way that we're going to learn how to make geometry and that is splines what splines are is like sets of uh, lines that you're going to draw let me first just get my view set up left and we can go ahead and choose this top and from here there's going to be the front and we can just shade it so what we need we're going to draw a line that go on each side and then we're going to go and do a few more lines in the middle of the shirt and we'll adjust that from there so what we can do at this point is go ahead and right click on the shirt make sure it's selected which is here right click and make sure hide unselected it means it will hide everything except the shirt great so while we're here let's go ahead and choose under create and shapes where it says line make sure we're going to go ahead in the maximize viewport and from the front view remember that we're going to go ahead and start to draw the line so we're going to start with one side here and the reason why you don't see it, let me just undo that. You can go ahead and choose wireframe and underline here. Let's go ahead and draw sort of line. Left click once and drag, it will give you that kind of curve. Like if you left click and drag, notice how the curve, and you start holding your mouse, it will keep you giving that these curves and you can adjust it like you want it to. Once you're done, you right click outside, right click once, it will stop making the line. So let's go ahead and do the shape of the shirt here, what we want it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and right from where it starts here. And then it's not going to be perfect, actually. It's not how I want it to be. Let me look back here. Okay, so I can go ahead and do this from here and there. Okay. Great. Now, if you finish drawing and you just want to deselect everything, right click again. And if you notice here, if I show you closely here, this is the shirt, and if I selected the line, it's going to be a very straight line. Like if I show you guys from the side, you can tell how straight this is. Like a straight line with the shirt is not what we want it. So to fix that, all we have to do is go back into modify, under line, choose vertices. And from here, let's go ahead and choose the from the left view. And here, let's go ahead and select each vertices and start to push them in toward the shirt. We can even get them inside because they're going to be what really stands in the shirt. And let's go ahead and pull this in. If you see these handles, you can simply click on one of these and adjust how the, uh, the vertices are going to lay on the shirt to give you a little curve. Let's go ahead and move these in a little bit more. These are going to be outside, so you can always keep them off the shirt. So let's go ahead and pull this up a little more. And we will actually get to use that later on in tutorials, like when we start making uh, a hair for, for, for characters. We'll be using splines a lot. So let's go ahead and now, let's see what we have done here. So we have the splines, both of them gonna go inside let's go ahead and fix that because I want to see the beginning of each one of these 
Okay, push this up a little. Okay. I actually want to push this in. These going to be inside the shirt. And this one will be out. Okay. Okay, and just get this a little bit out too. Now what I wanted to do is to, to make a plane that go all the way around this spline here. So to do that, from the front view again, let's go ahead and like, uh, maximize the viewport. Go from the front view, go in here, and we're going to go ahead again for create. From where it says geometry, and we're going to draw a plane. Left click and drag over that plane. So what we want the plane to start to go from down up following the spline, right? So to do that, let's go ahead and back into where it says modify. And we can start to adjust the plane as we want. I want this to be very thin. I can keep the height because it's going to go all the way around. And where it says width segments, I'll start to take this to something like one. Or gonna be two, just gonna be make sure there's a line in the middle. And where it says length segments, keep giving this a big number, maybe like 25 or maybe 30. And under that, while you see the plane is selected, choose from the modifier list, we can choose path modifier. And it's gonna be right path deformation. I'm sorry, it's called path to deformation. And once you left click here, it will tell you path, you know, it says none, and it tells you to select the path. So left click once here, and all you have to do is select the actual uh, path, and it will tell you here this is line 001. That's what we created. But still, this is not really moving to the to the spline. So how we can do that? Uh, let's go ahead and hmm. Actually, it's not past deformation. Let me see. Oh, I chose. Oh, I think I chose the wrong one. It's supposed to be path deformation bending. Again, choose, pick up the path, and under here, you know, still where it went. Let's go ahead and move it to path. And as you can look, it start taking this blind shape. And under percentage, let's go ahead and push this up. It's just going to go crazy. The reason why we can just, uh, oh, this, okay. So to fix the area or the direction, let's go ahead and start move things around here. And as well as here, let's see. So why is the good in our case here? Let's go ahead and rotate it. Let's see how, so we can make this look 90 degrees. And as you can see, it start to go around the spline as we want it to. It's going to keep the percentage going. And we can start, you know, moving things around here. But notice that now we are short in the plane. So to fix that, it's coming here again under length. And that's why I start to keep the modifier. And don't worry about how crazy this is going to look. We're going to go ahead and increase the length segments again so we can have a little bit of a smoother look. Under here again, we can just continue. And if we are happy, you can go ahead and stop. But if you're not, which is I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment here by taking the length of, these, of this plane a little bit. As you can see, it looks pretty good. But if you can't closely look here, this might be uh, the inside of that plane. Like we need a bigger, uh, okay, you know what? I might have to change the path as well. Let's go ahead and select uh, from the hierarchy. And we choose line. Under vertex, we can't adjust because this is not how it was actually put together. Let's go ahead and push these guys up a little more. As well as here, 
and all these three here. What I'm doing is still adjusting the vertices to kind of match what I need. Let's go ahead and take this inside the shirt, as well as these guys. Just going to pull these in too. Okay. Again, it's just a way for you guys to learn a new technique to make cloth. And it's always worth with trying. And I might just want to push this in a little more. Alright, perfect. Alright, we've got to undo. Make sure we just go out uncheck. So you can tell that it takes the shape of the shirt, but we still missing one part, and that is adding the shape of the um, that plane that we did to the actual geometry uh, to kind of include this in the UV map. So let's go ahead first thing first, right click where it's select, just make sure you select the plane, and then right click and collapse all. Or collapse tool. Let's go ahead and go also do edible poly. And as we're here, let's go ahead and are you add unwrap. And while we're here, let's go ahead and add or open the UV editor. This is how you remember this is how we set up the shirt from the uh, marvelous designer to add something to our UV map. All you have to do is go ahead and turn off. Uh, go back for edible poly. It will tell you whatever errors just keep you say yes. And let's go ahead and add or attached. And then go ahead and choose the geometry we just made. And let me just make sure if I... Okay, it's it takes this color, I think, of the actual... Uh, oh, okay, it's inverted. So if it disappears like that, all you have to do is select this polygon. And choose exactly one side of it, which is right here, and keep doing the grow. You can see it tells you under here the polygons count. You just keep going until it stops. Okay, 90 is when we finish. Right click and make sure to flip to normal. And here we go. To see that, in a better view, let's go ahead and add material to it. So let's go ahead and add such a material, maybe like a light, or maybe a light blue we can, so we can see it. And while we're here, go ahead and drag and drop this in the selection. Let's go ahead and redo that again. Make sure to go back to edge faces and see. Okay. So you keep selecting all the polygons for this side of the shirt okay looks pretty good let's go ahead and lift click and drag the materials in the top of it now if i just turn off edge faces there we go as you can see what we have left is to kind of include which is what we have done back into unwrap which is uv map and notice where the actual Side here, let's go ahead and choose uh, polygons and under expand face selection to theme, select, make sure to just turn on, and then it will select everything else except the patterns that we've selected. So let's go ahead and scale this down. And the very important part here is to know where this ends and where it starts. For example, if I left click these polygons, it will show me that these polygons where it starts, and that's what we need to know. Okay, let's go ahead and pull this aside and close it. Right clicking collapse. Okay, so so far I'm really happy with the results. Let me just make sure on edge and on head all. Let me go ahead and take this off one more time. Okay, so as you can see, the shirt exactly lays exactly in the body was no problem. So to skin that character, to skin that shirt without actually the hustle of actually going 
to each bones and try, you know, to copy and paste and add weight to each vertices. There's an easy way to do that. The first thing we need to do is every part, every part of the body that under the shirt, we don't need it. So let's go ahead and take from right here, all the way up to here, all the chest area except this area here, we'll take it off. So let's go ahead and back into edge faces. And we're gonna select the body part, which is the, uh, the pelvis. I'm sorry, they're gonna be the top. And under polygons, Whatever error accepted, go ahead and choose polygons. Left click here. And if you know your selection passes the area where the shirt is, make sure to isolate it or deselect it. So let's go ahead and choose from right here, the pelvis. I'm sorry, I'm still saying pelvis. It's the top. And take all these areas. Everything is highlighted in red. It's what you highlighted. So let's go ahead and take areas off. You know what? You can go ahead and left click and drag over the entire thing and deselect. That will be much easier for you to do. So I might want to keep a few areas in the back. Okay, maybe up to here. And I can go from the side view as well and do it. Okay, it looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and each side here. Where it says, you know, the chest area, go ahead and deselect by holding Control and Alt and left click to deselect these polygons. And let's go ahead and go over the back and check if we miss anything. Looks good so far. And we're going to go ahead and left click again. Hold on Control and Alt, left click and drag to deselect. And do the same thing here. And you have to be very careful when you do that because you don't want to go and exceed polygons that are already visible, which is going to make your shirt looks really bad. For example, this is still going to be seen as a polygon. So I'm going to deselect it. Okay. As well as here, let's see. This all looks pretty good, so let's go ahead and uh, take it off. Now, while everything is selected inside the shirt, hit delete. Yeah, you don't see everything inside the shirt. The reason why, if you select the shirt, right click and hide selection, this is what you're left with. Now you can go back into the body with the top and start cleaning off what you uh, left under polygons again. Let's go ahead and take this guy out, as well as this. Try to get it as far as you can to match up with everything else. Let's say I took two parts from here. Let's go ahead and uh, see where we got. I think it's all up to here. Okay. Looks very good. Okay. And let's see here, I'm going to get rid of this, as well as here. If you did actually exceed so far from like here, I took parts of the arm that I didn't really take here. Let me undo the shirt, uh, actually unhide the shirt and see how far I've gone. Okay. I still can't take this one out. Okay, and I still have areas here that I actually need to take off as well under the shirt, you know, shoulders, which is a very big problem if you have in, uh, joints or the character moves that will affect the actual skin and you will see the, the shirt going through it. So get as far as you can as long as you're not really seeing it through the shirt. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and delete all that. And I think that is enough. Let's go ahead and turn off polygons in the mode now. Back to this. Oh, we still have one part. Alright, so we have cleared everything. So how can we add this to the skin of the actual character without going through the 
hustle of us king. It's simple as this, guys. Go ahead and while this, this shirt is selected, go ahead and choose attach. I'm oh, sorry, actually, you're going to have to choose the skin of the character. And make sure you do not delete the skin under Edible Poly. Left click. Once it highlighted, again, with the same error, you can just turn it off. And under Edible Poly, you're going to choose Attached. And you're going to go ahead and choose uh, Attached under here. And it will say you whatever error, again, Match ID, whatever. Just go ahead and continue with OK. Now, if I turn off this and I go back to Skin, watch what happened. It's almost 90% has been done for you. The only problem that we have is some areas here and there. And this is easily to be fixed. So let's go ahead and choose Edge Faces. Under Edible Poly, I mean Edit Envelopes, Skin, or Vertices. And choose where the area that we need. Let's go ahead and choose. Okay, we, we need one here. And let me see if I can get to this. Uh, envelope Okay, let's go ahead and select these vertices and see where they belong and If you get a little closer look here These probably belong to spine Three or four probably spine four give it a little bit of weight and you notice how they go in the shirt Okay, let's go ahead and give it spine three and see how far they go. Okay, they go up actually. So you're gonna have to check one last time for every vertices. I'm gonna go hold off, click and drag over the entire chest area, and for spine three, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a weight here. Let's see how it go. Looks pretty good. Let me see here. Looks well, very good here, okay. So you go ahead through every vertices. It's not gonna be much work like you usually do. Um, but I will might I might have just to be quiet and just do that uh, with the speed up time so you can you can save the time for you. And uh, once everything is weighted, I'll come back to you. So here we finish the actual text uh, the scanning part and what we have left it just go ahead and add a texture to it and from there we can take it maybe to Photoshop and retexture it but for the sake of the tutorial if you haven't seen the, the texturing part I have a couple of videos that I have talked about how to texture in 3ds Max and I will leave you guys a link in the description to check it out. Uh, for all the videos and let's go ahead for now we can just add an, a random texture and to do that let's go ahead and open up the material editor and we can go ahead and actually choose uh, material and under my make sure this is the standard under the fuse here check that box 
and wait for the opening for the bitmap under maps standard and we're going to go and choose bitmap i'll choose this one for example texturing isn't very important but also remember you have to rename your texture properly in order for the shirt to actually show so let's go ahead and name this shirt space brackets give it a number doesn't matter what it is as long as over uh, 10 make sure to copy this ID again show shaded material in viewport and under here left click and just copy and paste the same name and go show the show shaded material viewport and while we here let's go ahead and select uh, polygon uh, we can choose this one side of the shirt and just keep grow our selection I'm still going to show you guys the results when we finish uh, how it looks like after texturing but for now I'll just use a random texture okay so we have done one side we need this the other part of the shirt let's go ahead and check that plane and keep growing the selection because remember, this is going to be a different color than the actual shirt. And let's go ahead and add another texture. And we can choose the same thing under a diffuse map. And bitmap and choose the other. Let's go ahead and choose another texture. Um, I've had one here, maybe. I can choose this one. Call this uh, shirt. Part oh ribbon and oh I forgot space brackets to twenty one close brackets copy that under here paste it and close it oh I forgot actually to drag and drop left click and drag over the entire plane and now let's go ahead and close it. And what you have left is to select the entire pelvis, which is going to be the entire the entire thing. Go ahead and under uh, 3ds Max, export, and we're going to go ahead and export it as a mesh. And let's call this IMVU shirt tutorial, and we'll export it. Make sure to shoot the skin at the uh, not the skin at the skeleton for the original file, which is here. I have it outside so you can easily access it and wait for it. And last thing, we'll move to uh, IMV and see what we did. So let's go ahead and choose create new product and mail then we choose stop and right here all we have to do we're not really going to change anything with configuration you're going to keep it the same way so let's go ahead add the xmf and choose the folder and it's right here i have you to shirt tutorial and let's go ahead and apply let's go ahead and change the room to something that we can see and last is actually I went to Photoshop and used 3ds Max to make texture for the shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and load my texture now. And if you guys are really interested to know how I did the texture in 3ds Max, you can always leave me a comment. I'll try to like make like a short video to show you guys how you can set up some lights and try to get the texture uh, to different colors. It's like in case you know you wanted to make the same shirt in like four or five different colors. I'll show you guys how you can do that in 3ds Max. So before we go move forward, let's go ahead and make sure two sided is checked and let's go ahead and apply. And here is the texture loaded up and that's actually baked from 3ds Max with some light. It looks pretty good. You don't really have to do much uh, in Photoshop. A list some cleanup you see in the edges here. And um, I hope this was very helpful. If you guys learned something new uh, in this tutorial, make sure to leave me a comment if you have any questions. 
Uh, and speaking of a next tutorial, we will learn how to make shoes. Uh, this has been probably one of the requested you know, tutorials to make. So stay tuned until next time. Take care.